Welcome, future millionaires, to another episode of Personal Finance with Professor X. Today, we have Stock Market 101, and we have a guest lecturer, somebody who I absolutely adore, a gentleman at Merrill Lynch named Aubrey Lee. Aubrey, I've, I have gotten to know each other through my work at Wayne State University here in Detroit, and he's a financial advisor with Merrill Lynch. Aubrey, I haven't met too many people in my life that have, have shown the willingness and ability to give back and connect with the next generation like you have. So I thought you'd be the perfect person to have on our show today to talk about young people, about both careers as a financial advisor and why having a financial advisor is important. So before we get into it today, tell us your story. Where, 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 do, where does our video find you today and, and what's the Aubrey Lee story? Well, well, first of all, Matt, thank you very much. It's it's a delight to be with you. You know, one of the things that I've really enjoyed over the past couple of years is is our engagement with the Board of Visitors and, and more importantly, the students at Wayne State University. I'll tell anybody that listens, these young men and women are just outstanding and it really makes you feel good about the future when you look at the quality of student that comes through the Wayne State University. So I wanna make sure I, I mention that. And then my engagement with you is just, is, is phenomenal. I tell a, a story and I won't share that story now, but uh, I learned a lot about you at our first interaction <laughs> uh, at, an, at, at an event. We'll save that for another time, how's that? It's, so, it's all good. So, so what happened, Matt, <laughs> what happened, Matt, is, is, you know, I was a banker at a major bank here locally and really getting my career off and running that was in 1980 and just kind of moving forward and at the time there was a gentleman his name is dan that we had a mutual client this person was a client at merrill lynch and then also at the bank that i i worked at and, and so i would have interactions with dan and one day he said you know you're pretty good at what you do you might want to think about looking at a career at merrill lynch it'll be really rewarding and so I took that leap of faith, which if you know anything about me, I'm pretty conservative and don't make a lot of changes. Uh, I took that leap of, of faith. The timing was perfect. And, and I joined Merrill Lynch in May of 1987. And it's been a phenomenal ride ever since. So, you know, that's kind of the quick, uh, 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 if you will, background on, on how I came to be at Merrill Lynch. Well, it's it's an amazing it's an amazing career you've carved out there, Aubrey, and and maybe maybe the question that I think when you know when I'm when I'm when I was young and I'm, I was trying to kind of find my way in this world, um, you know, the question I would often try to ask myself is, well, you know, what am I good at, and and what's this this potential career that I'm looking at, what uh, what does it what what talents does it kind of or skills does it reward? Broadly speaking, if, if somebody's thinking about a career as an advisor or a wealth manager, what what skills or talents do you look for in, in a young person that give you uh, encouragement that they could make a great advisor? Yeah, uh, several things, Matt. One, I think the key thing is that you really need to care about and and really have a passion for helping others. Right, no matter what their station is in, in life is. And along with that, I think it's important that you have empathy because as people go through their lives, they'll have ups and they'll have downs, right? And you have to have empathy when folk have those difficult times and, and be right there with them. So that's the one thing. Really, you have to care. You have to be an excellent listener. I keep a, a note in front of me and I look at it right now. It says simply, it's not about me. And in bold letters, listen, right? And then obviously the technical skills are, are important. Uh, you know, having an understanding about the economy, an understanding about the markets, and then an understanding about financial planning, right? So the technical skills certainly are important. And then I think the other thing is we all have, and you, you kind of hinted about this a moment ago, complementary skills. We all have a skill set. I love and enjoy people. I get my energy from being around people. So I need to have someone on my team that complements that skill, right? That might be more technically proficient in planning. So again, care and empathy, technical skills, passion for helping others, and the, the ability to build a well-rounded team with complementary skills. 
I think it's so interesting that you you kind of of the the, the skills and talents you mentioned you put. It, it was almost as if the knowledge of the stock market and the economy was like a, a throw in at the end. You know, you're you're like, you know, empathy, the ability to care for other people, being a good listener, you know, put, putting putting others interests ahead of your own. I, and oh, by the way, it doesn't hurt to know something about the stock market. You know, and so what I what I what I infer from your answer is that uh, just about anyone with those core talents could become an advisor because a lot of That's the right. things that you, you can you can teach someone to understand the, the market and you, you probably have a lot of people at Merrill Lynch that might not have studied economics or finance or accounting right. they might have come from different backgrounds that's right that's exactly right I mean when someone looks for an advisor they're going to frankly assume that you have the technical capabilities that's table stakes mm -hmm. now what do you bring to a relationship beyond that. That to me is the key. When you look at the, the arc of a uh, career of an advisor, you know, I mean, I, I, if you feel comfortable talking about it, you know, whenever, I mean, I, I, you and I were not made out of stone and, and young people right now, you know, it, it costs a lot right. of money to go to college. How do you, when you kind of look and, and you can speak in general terms if you don't want to talk about Merrill Lynch, but when you took a look at like the, the growth and the, the evolution of a career as a wealth manager or financial advisor, how does that, how does that, what does that shape look like? And when people look at compensation throughout the life of their career, what is that general, what trends generally come into play? Yeah. So, so when you think about the arc of an advisor as a young man or a young lady coming into our business, right? The first thing you want to do beyond again, Matt, the technical capabilities is to demonstrate an ability to go out and connect with folk like yourself you know, individuals, families, businesses, business owners, so that you can now develop uh, an actual practice. And then from there, what ends up happening, Matt, is you start to grow your business, if you will. And then as you have success, those families and businesses and business owners that you work with will recognize your talent and they'll start to share with their friends and relatives and other business owners. This is a young man. Here's a young lady that's really good at what they do. You might want to think about engaging them. And that's a period of time, Matt, I, I think over the first five to 10 years, you really see that arc start to, you know, have kind of a steep curve. And then, and so as it starts to ramp up, and I'm what types of uh, relative levels is it, is this a job that can be generate really tremendous income or so here, here's what i would say the beauty about the work that we do matt is that you can really make a great living mm -hmm. right and i won't spend a lot of time talking about money mm -hmm. right because what i will tell you is the value of knowing people like you matt and others that i've had a chance to know over the years there's a value in there that, frankly, you can't put a price on. Now, from a practical standpoint, the beauty of the work that we do is that your income typically is uncapped. I'll put it this way. You can earn enough in terms of income to essentially be able to do anything that you might desire in life. What I've learned over the years, and you didn't ask this question, but what I've learned over the years Money comes and goes, but it's the value of the relationships, that experience that you have over the years, that's the real value. Money is important, make no mistake about that, but that value over and above and beyond that is, it's, frankly, it's priceless. Well, you know, Aubrey, when, I, when you're a young person, you know, and you're, you're making decisions in the gray areas, and yeah. I think one of the problems that we all kind of deal with is that this world feels so transactional sometimes. Yeah. And, you know, one of the things that I've realized quickly in, in my life and career is that it, the world is so small and, you know, yeah. your, your relationships, even if you think, um, you know, that, oh, this is a big town and nobody's ever going to remember me, that couldn't be further from the truth. And, and so you really have to approach every relationship like, you know, you're going to know this person for 10 or 20 or 30 years because as you know 
you will, right? And and so Absolutely. if you have a if you have a great reputation and you always treat people, you know, deal with people fairly, and you're a good stakeholder, that as you said, I think the money will kind of come, and and that is it, it really you know, does. It really yeah. does, and and I don't mean to give kind of a cute answer around that. You know, the yeah. reality is. You know, I have my wife and I, we have four beautiful adult children. We have five grandchildren. You know, we've been able to enjoy, I think, a pretty good life, mm -hmm. right? So an income, making a living, a living rather, is important. Make no mistake about that. Yeah. Once you've accomplished that, boy, I tell you what, it, it, it's what happens over and, be, uh, over and beyond that that really makes the difference in, in our lives.